This talk is about the problem of how you should use data selection to better train or fine tune a language model if you only have a limited compute budget. In the paper, we term this the compute constraint data selection. The context of the paper is that data is crucial in the recent success of large language models. In the canonical scaling law paper, Kaplan et al. shows that just like the number of parameters, the relationship between test loss and the size of the data sets can be described as the power law. That is, an exponential increase in the number of tokens will roughly lead to a linear decrease in test loss. In the proprietary models, scaling data sizes has also been of growing importance. The Lama family of models, for example, despite having roughly the same base model parameters, have scaled their training corpus tremendously from 1 trillion all the way to 15 trillion tokens. However, orthogonal to the size of the data sets is also this inherent quality of data, which the scaling laws fails to capture. Intuitively, given the same data budget, models that are trained on higher quality data should perform better. This naturally raises the issue of how to optimally select and filter data to maximize model performance. Data selection provides tangible benefits in training models. Better data selection methods yields higher data efficiency, which means that models can achieve same performance with less data. Less flops are being spent in a training, thereby saving compute. Many works have and have since developed really powerful an interesting way of selecting data. However, choosing the most sophisticated data selection methods might not be the compute optimal choice. A powerful data selection method does not a priori imply that it is compute optimal. Specifically, the compute for data selection is not budgeted for in the current literature. Comparison and performance are done only within the same data budget rather than the total compute budget. While it does highlight the additional value a particular data selection method is able to extract from any given pool of data, it doesn't really answer the question of compute optimality, which care less about the number of points being chosen than the actual flops or compute being spent. In a fixed compute budget setting, we are faced with this inherent trade-off where data selection gives you this additional gain in performance with the same amount of data, but you will receive a certain flops penalty from using better data selection methods. To introduce the problem a bit more formally, it will be a good primer to first define what data selection is. In machine learning, this is formulated as a core set selection problem. In a learning task, we are given a large training set D, a target task tau. Our goal is to find the optimal subset S star such that the model T of S trained on that set as maximizes some performance function p. This arbitrary function represents the set of tasks that we would like the model to perform well on. The only constraint that we have is that the selected set S and max could have a max cardinality of k, that is our data budget. In practice, this optimization problem is quite challenging to solve. To tractably solve this problem requires us making two implicit assumptions about our data. Assumption one is that we have an access to some validation set V that correlates well with the test set tau. This kind of naturally follows how we do machine learning and deep learning in the first place. The heavy lifting assumption is the second assumption, where we assume that the performance function that we're maximizing toward is roughly monotonic and submodular in the data set chosen. Without generalizing too much, this modularity means that instead of estimating the performance of a full set S, which consists of, say, n examples, you can instead write it as a summation of the value of the performance of a single training example X in your set S. Because we impose the two aforementioned assumption, that is, assuming modularity in our data and having well-correlated validation set, a two-step greedy algorithm is justified to solving this optimization problem. Specifically, this is a form of greedy monotonic data selection. First, to estimate the marginal contributions of individual training points x, most data selection methods in LMs uses a utility function, 
v of x to calculate a utility for each training data point x. Second, you have a selection mechanism where you use that score, you rank all the data points in that training set, and selecting those that maximizes the total utility within the data budget k. While the formal framework presented in the previous slides provides a general definition for data selection, we argue that it is insufficient for the practical challenge of fine-tuning LMs. The issue is that LM fine-tuning is often bottlenecked by a computational budget than a data budget. There are two major computational bottlenecks in this process. First, the cost of training the model on any set of data. And second, the cost of computing the utility function on the entire training set. In practice, under a compute constraint, the true cost of data selection can reduce significantly the amount of training points we can select for. Assuming we at minimal require the computation of the utility function over the entire trained data set, we can define the compute constraint data selection objective as the following. To do so, we simply replace the previous data budget k with a compute budget k, which consists of the following two costs. Training cost, c, subscript t of s, and a data selection cost, c, subscript v of x, that is summed over the entire trained data set. Essentially, we have the same objective, but now the constraint takes into account of all of the compute spent in both training and data selection. OK, let's consider different data selection methods used in LMs and the respective utility function and computational cost. The simplest is to perform data selection on the lexicon level through word matching. Here, we choose BM25 as a specific instance of this class of method. We find that it gives the most consistent and strongest result over others. The utility functions assigns utility based on the frequency of terms between validation and training data. Because of its simplicity, the compute needed for this method is practically zero. Another straightforward method is retrieving the most similar examples to the validation datasets by some cosine similarity of sentence embeddings. This involves embedding both the training and the validation data points with a bird size model. The compute needed is more than BM25, but still quite small compared to usual scales of LNs. We'll denote the compute cost by the symbol epsilon. A less common but increasingly popular method is to score documents using the perplexity of a language model trained directly on the validation set, and then evaluate the model on every training data point, using perplexity as a proxy for utility function. The compute needed per data point is therefore the number of flops required to perform one full forward pass of that particular model. Arguably, the most interesting and high-performing method is to design a gradient-based utility function for data selection. This is usually formulated with influence function, which evaluates the utility of data points based on the influence on the model's loss with respect to the target data. The utility function quantifies this influence by computing the inner product between the gradient of the loss on training point x and the gradient on the loss on validation set v, scaled by a learning weight eta at that time step. Due to the need to compute gradient, the compute needed per data point is approximately equivalent to three forward passes, assuming that one backward pass equals two forward. Here's a summary of each of the methods utility function and their respective computational cost. The key observation is that the efficacy of data selection directly scales with its compute spent. To analytically analyze the trade-off between the compute of data selection methods and the expected gain in model performance, we will need to model this relationship mathematically. Intuitively, we know that the more compute-intensive data selection methods are able to achieve higher performance with less data samples. However, the value of information gained from selecting additional data points quickly diminishes as more points are being explored. Therefore, we hypothesize that data selection could be modeled with some kind of exponential saturation function. 
where the initial selected data input produces most of the value to the system. And each time a new data is being added, it contains or has smaller utility than the previous data. Formally, we formalize this by introduce a function, C of K, which is the combined cost of training and data selection given K data points. We introduce the term P bar and P naught as the final and the initial performance of a model under a data selection method, respectively. Under this formulation, we define a form of exponential saturation function P of K that allows us to predict the performance given just the number of data points. Here, the lambda is a data selection specific coefficient. It represents the efficiency of the data selection method in extracting useful and valuable information given additional compute. If lambda is close to zero, then it means that the data selection method is not very good at finding valuable data to the tasks. So it will take more data samples to reach p bar, the final performance. Conversely, if lambda is very large, then it means that the data selection is very good at finding data that has high value. So it will be much faster to converge to the final performance p bar. In this figure, we simulate a hypothetical scenario using our proposed model under different compute budget. We adjust the lambda parameter for each data selection method such that each time we increase the compute cost to another class of data selection, the utility value doubles compared to its previous level. In our simulation, we show that at small budget, the lexical method will always outperform more advanced data selection methods because their data selection cost is simply too high. Under our assumptions, if you use the same model to fine tune and select data, gradient methods can never be optimal as its cost exceeds one epoch of training already. However, because perplexity and gradient based methods can use a smaller model, they benefit from a kind of economies of scale as you increase your compute budget. As compute scales, perplexity and gradient methods can both be compute optimal at some point as the relative cost of data selection decreases. If we fix the data selection model to be the smallest from any given LM family, our simulation suggests that the compute optimal data selection method changes as a function of the compute budget and the performance rate associated with each method, that is our lambda. To test our theoretical analysis in practice, we empirically perform a comprehensive sweep of scaling experiment. The goal here is to scale both the fine-tuning tokens model sizes, and most importantly, data selection in terms of compute. The setting we're focusing here is task-specific fine-tuning. We have a fairly large and diverse instruction tuning data set of about 100 million tokens, and we focus on three separate target tasks. We roughly follow the same scaling experiments recipe like the chinchilla, the compute optimal training paper, except that we have this additional axis of data selection. Together, this makes up about 600 training runs. In this figure, we display the experimental results with five different data selection methods across three pre-trained model sizes on one of the popular downstream tasks, MMLU. Each scatter point in each subplot is the final target task performance of a single training run, which runs with a particular data budget, model size, and data selection methods. For each pre-trained parameter size, we fit a Pareto front as a power law in dash line to denote the compute optimal frontier. Our 7B and 13B model results, as shown in the first two columns, show that at a small to medium compute budget, cheap methods, including lexical method, embedding method, significantly outperform complexity and gradient methods. This suggests that the marginal benefits one can get from using a more sophisticated data selection method does not outweigh its cost in selecting these high valuable data. Compared to the 7 billion result, at the 13 billion model size, while cheaper methods are still being preferred, expensive methods are becoming more and more competitive. 
at the largest 70B model size shown in the last column, we find that perplexity and gradient actually outperform both lexicon and embedding for the first time. This suggests that at a very large compute budget, more sophisticated and costly method can gain a greater advantage compared to lexicon and embedding methods. As model sizes continues to scale and the relative cost of data selection shrink, we should expect these advanced methods becoming more compute optimal. We run the same kind of experiment in two other downstream tasks and a very similar result are observed. Here is just a more zoomed out versions of the result. Interestingly, we can also use the empirical runs and fit to our proposed formula for data selection. Specifically, we fit the parametric formula that we proposed to the empirical curves by fitting the lambda parameter per method and per data set. In particular, we see that the 7 billion and 13 billion results largely are aligned with the small budget scenario described in our simulation, where sophisticated methods are dominated by cheaper methods. And the 70 billion result aligns with the medium budget and the large budget simulation, where we see both perplexity and gradient becomes compute optimal after certain flops. Importantly, the parametric fit we derived contains useful information that enables us to extrapolate and predict roughly the compute optimal training to data selection model size ratio. In other words, if we fit our proposed function on data up to some small model size, how well does the fit predict the behavior from large model sizes? Indeed, we can estimate the compute optimal ratio between the training model size and the data selection model size. We can perform the analysis by simply adjusting the ratio until we see our fitted curves surpass the Pareto efficient frontier at a particular model size. Empirically, we find that this gives quite consistent predictions. For perplexity data selection, the method becomes compute optimal when a training model is 5x larger than a data selection model. In our case, this is around 35 billion parameters. For gradient data selection, our extrapolation indicates that the training model needs to be approximately 10x larger than a data selection model before it becomes compute optimal. In our case, this is around 70 billion parameters. Okay, to summarize the findings of this paper in takeaways, we first describe the general problem of data selection and how it works in the landscapes of LMs, which in most cases impose this additional compute constraint. Second, we model the behavior of compute constraint data selection using a parametric saturation function showing that the compute optimal data selection actually depends on the available compute and how efficiently a given method is able to extract value from data. Third, our experiments demonstrate that simple methods like lexicon or embedding data selection are compute optimal in most practical settings. In contrast, more expensive methods only is compute optimal when the compute budget is high and when smaller models within the same LM families are available for data selection. With that, I'll conclude my talk. I would say thank you so much for listening and for paying attention. I want to thank my amazing advisor, Sasha Rush, for advising this project, and Wu Zhong, Meng Zhou, Zhun Xiong, and Wen Qing for giving feedbacks, and Nicholas for the slides inspiration.